This is Timmy. Timmy just got his night vision from the armory and is now wearing it everywhere. Hey, did that move? No, no, sorry, sorry. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. His NCO doesn't really like it. What is night vision? In short, night vision is a tool, also for some guys a toy, which amplifies incoming light particles, photons. Through inner technological slash chemical magic, these photons are turned into electrons and multiplied several times. That magic happens inside the tube, which we like to call the brain of the whole party. But now, a question arises, if there's too much light, will it overwhelm the device? Will there be any damage? What sort of? How quickly damage can appear? Will damage be temporary or permanent? As well, what will be instant night vision day ruiners? In this video, we are going to take our brave elderly unit with an old tube from the early 2000 era. It's worn out at the end of its lifetime, Gen 2 tube, which we put against different light conditions. Room lights, screens, lasers, daylight, and the sun. In advance and as a spoiler, this old tube can take a solid punch and stand. Modern tubes cannot be as capable as our elderly here, so we can say modern tubes can be much more caprice against the same light conditions, and it is logical because those tubes' sensitivity, light amplification level, is totally different than it was 20 years ago. So do not take every test result as a golden. Your Gucci tube might not have the same results. It can be worse and damage can appear way quicker. Our first test, room lights. This is our tube before the whole project. Upcoming scenario is simple. Timmy was enjoying his newly acquired device privately. Suddenly, his girlfriend or mom comes into his room and turns on the lights. What will happen with the tube? As with this and other tests, we will not scale the time frame to a long period. As a responsible device user, we take into account that it's our responsibility to react against new and sudden lighting conditions, so turn our heads away or turn the device off. If you happen to stare at a laser for a while, it's your fault. If you forget your device turned on during daylight, that's your fault. Our goal is to find what can make immediate or quick damage. After this one and a half minute room light test, device is okay. Nothing significant. So in conclusion, room lights are not dangerous for your tube, but that doesn't mean you should forget your device turned on in such a lightning environment for hours. Second test, flashlights. Flashlights are a scary word for a lot of night vision users. What happens if I have acquired this unfair Bravo 6 capability and all those pores come with their cheap flashlights? It really comes down to the flashlight's capability and brightness. In this test, we use Nightcore i6 440 lumen flashlight. We use IR and white light, stationary and strobe light. Let's see what happens. Again, with flashlights, we do not do it for 10 minutes. 30 seconds to one minute should be enough for at least regular Joe to take time and adapt against the situation. Turn your head away or turn the device off. We had some interesting anomalies with IR light and with strobe. Strobe test was pretty scary and we didn't know what to expect, but we sleep bit better now knowing it's not such a tough punch for our tube. If you have to stare at this light source for a long period of time, it might not be healthy for your device. After two and a half minute long test, we can conclude that for our device, 500 lumen flashlight is not an instant danger for the tube, but they can make a punch in a short amount of time. Third test, screens, smartphone. In this scenario, Timmy is vibing at Overwatch and is bored. He is not an exemplary soldier, so he takes his phone out. Of course, he's not aware that his night vision is on. What happens with his device? Hey, that's a cool video.
Total time, which night vision was pointed to screen, was 1 5 to 5 minutes. As we can see in this time frame, nothing happened, so the phone screen is not an immediate danger for the tube. Desktop monitors. Timmy is watching his Fav YouTube channel. Of course, again, he is not really the sharpest pencil in the cup, and his device is on during big flannel daddy content time. Also, in addition, room lights are on, but after the first test, we really don't care about those anymore. But if you look at any of the conflicts going on right now, Everybody's using thermal. Uh, if you don't have thermal, you, you're going to die to somebody who does use thermal. Please have it on. At some point, we cover the night vision frontal lens with white paper to check if there's anything appearing, but nothing so far. In total of one minute and four to five seconds, our tube here did not really take a hit, so the desktop screen was not really dangerous, but there are some differences in the center. Also, we have seen a tube which was damaged by a computer monitor, and it was quick to come so be aware. This is the end of day one tests, and to the black box our device goes. If we compare our two picture before all the tests we see, there are some strange blemish areas. Now the question remains if these are temporary or permanent. By temporary we mean that these damaged parts can actually disappear. One option to acquire this is black boxing. We put the device inside a really dark place, Put in a fresh battery, turn on the device, and keep it running inside this box until the battery dies. After that, temporary damages should disappear or be brought to a minimum. 48 hours have passed, and let's see what's the difference between two pictures before black box. We can notice that in the middle are refreshed, two picture is cleaner and again smooth. Off to the new tests we go. We go outside, during daylight, okay. a big no for turned on night vision. No question about it, I am ready to get hurt again. Again, we have some trash to throw away, and while the sun Bruh. is out. Sky condition, intermittent cloudiness, and sun peaks through from time to time. Sun is behind the night vision and is reflecting from the wall in front of it. As we can see, the sun is starting to do some crazy stuff, and we were pretty nervous. This is it. Big damage, permanent damage maybe. Nope. Just after we turn it off and on, the tube is clean again. This ugly black splatter disappeared. Sun is now to the left of us, location is pretty much the same. Our goal is to check what happens with the device if Timmy forgets it under the tree where there's not direct sunlight. After 77 seconds, we notice no damage. Let's turn the tripod and device back against this wall where sunlight points directly. After some seconds, the same black anomaly appears. But just when we put a paper sheet in front to check, if this damage is permanent, it disappears. And when we remove our sheet, black splatter is back. Interesting. You know what is also interesting? This footage is new footage where the device is pointing at a white wall. There's no air ventilation anymore, but the ventilation grid remains, so we can assume that from the last position this grid pattern is burned into the device. Is it permanent damage? Also, of course, this black splatter comes and goes, and it hasn't left us. Its intensity depends on sun placement from the device. If the sun is behind a cloud or device, is not directly looking into areas where sunlights land. For example, if we turn the device away from the wall towards the street, this black splatter weakens. What can we take from this test? Daylight, and especially sun in Legends, should be an instant NVG mood breaker, and should ruin your device permanently. With our device here, there's no big blems and damages. And just two minutes after the outside test, when we went back inside, this is the two picture. Where's the legendary blems and burns? Interesting. But take it with a pinch of salt, because this test could be a case where your modern tube can react much more aggressively against such a lighting environment than our old boy here. So if still don't really stare at the sun, and don't forget your device on for an unreasonable amount of time during daytime. Lasers. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, stay everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm! So, when we started with this project, the most requested test was lasers. What will happen with my nods when there's others in op for waving their powerful cat toys? Lasers are a strong beam of light, so in theory, these must burn a mark instantly. We have no idea what could happen, so we cover the frontal lens with a piece of paper. When we remove it, we assume we will have an instant blem as legends state. 
we go with different approaches. Firstly, we just pass the laser over the tube. This should give some rough idea how our device should react when we have an op for who's just pointing their random laser towards us. As well, we would like to test the limits and show the laser straight in the tube for some time. We use different laser modes and powers. Starting with low infrared, then high infrared, then low visible, and after that high visible. First test, as stated, is low infrared. To be honest, after low infrared, we were confused. Most feared myth wasn't true, even after several seconds. Only one way to go forward here, point a Facebook Marketplace spicy laser. High infrared is the second option. Again, we start this round with laser pass-bys. After we saw that these under 10 seconds straight in lasers didn't do much, we went a bit more aggressive and started to spread the time frame. Again, we were surprised. 30 seconds straight laser and afterwards, still nothing. With that, we just touched the surface of not really possible scenarios. I mean, who's gonna show and who's gonna let the laser point inside their device for a whole 30 seconds on field? Third mode, visible low. This time, there must be permanent damage, right? But where are at least laser stripes? So again, holding this laser a bit longer. And it seems we are starting to get somewhere. But still, it's only a minor difference between pre-laser test two pictures. High visible laser. As stated with this one at the spot, we were afraid and also excited to get these instant burns. We still haven't really gotten over the fact that the two picture basically is clean and usable, even after low visible laser mode. We've heard you could draw a burn picture to tube through the hole, so we tried to create a smiley face. But even after 20 seconds, nothing, really. We started to get a little bit frustrated about how the heck we could make a punch and prove and visualize all the myths. Removed this little paper face and went all in with this Holosun laser. 5 MW Holosun high visible straight to tube. After 30 seconds, the damage was not much. Yes, something has appeared in the tube picture, but the device is reasonably usable. We were speechless. But what if we did something, or even everything wrong? We should have pointed these light sources directly in stationary. Maybe our boy, Timmy Shaky Hands, somehow matters. Firstly, back to the flashlight, and we put it closer to the device. After short time frames, we cover the tube with white paper to check the two picture difference during the process. And comparing it with our first flashlight test, yes, now it seems our flashlight has made a tougher punch. But again, is this black splatter permanent? Spotlight is back on the Holosun 420 high visible laser, but this time we put it on a table so the laser could be pointed directly to one spot from close distance. After we checked the white paper, from first look, the laser did not seem to be as bad as the flashlight was. And yes, we just showed this high visible laser straight in for three minutes, and again the result is simply speechless. So what else to go forward with then cut to the chase and use something even more powerful? Boy who lived. Come to die. We got a chance to try a full power laser. Not the high power by the US military standards, but this is several times more powerful than Holosun Max. Laser. Night vision. Laser directly in night vision. So we raised the bar to 40 milliwatts, and we now don't hold back with the time frame either. And finally, we are actually starting to get somewhere. To conclude the long-weighted laser test. 
safe lasers as holosuns, at least to our old tube, were not dangerous. We actually could create something to tube with the highest visible mode, but it's not so bad and it took some reasonable amount of time. Come on, during field op, why would you straightly stare at this amount of time? As well, if we compare two two pictures, Holosun Dark Splatter has actually disappeared. So based on this, Holosun could not pretty much do anything. Now high power lasers could actually be a problem here. Again, this is an old tube, and we are really surprised it has been so durable, but we've heard stories where they confirm that modern tubes can get instant damages if pointed with high power lasers. Maybe we could do this test somewhere in the future with a modern tube. If we get 5,000 likes on this video, we're gonna make it happen. But to really put the thing into limits here, let's watch straight to the sun. We are now in full throttle due to laser test, so we are just gonna mount the noodle on a tripod and look at the sun for minutes here. First test is night vision is pointed towards the sun, day cap off and two turned off. After two minutes, the sun through the clouds could not make a punch which we could see if white paper was in front of the tube just after. Oh, and as we can see, laser damage is permanent, so at least that we could manage to create. But if we turn on the device, we can clearly see this ugly black splatter already there from the start. From here, let's just start the timer and see what happens. Again, from time to time, we cover the tube with paper to see what's going on. But it seems this splatter is not permanent so far. But we have other interesting artwork here. Check the turned in picture. The view our tube was encountering on the tripod seems to be burned inside the tube. We were there for like 5 minutes and to be clear, it was not unfortunately clear sky. Let's go inside and see what our tube has to say about this test. And well yes after 2 mics, we are still Gucci. But at least we got the laser marks. Finally, the final standoff, the final boss, and unbeatable enemy of the night visions, direct sunlight. As nothing surprises us anymore, we go straight in for several minutes here. Sun is so bright that we had to tilt our heads away. The battle is intense. After three minutes, results are... So this is it, final result after storms and fire. To be honest, yes we expected more. We expected a mass of black burns and stripes. But to conclude our sun test, yes these big ugly two pictures can appear if you really forget your device somewhere turned on. We did this sun test for a total of 8 minutes even though the actual punch was made by direct sun. So if it is a clear sky day, be responsible. LARPer and use day caps. Don't forget your device on after you went out from daytime cave raid LARP. It might be decisive for your tube, especially for modern tubes. But come on, there's maybe still room to cover up Timmy's arrogance here. Nothing will seriously happen, because we have glorious blackboxing aid coming up. After 72 hours. Nope, this is not the case. This is really the final two picture. Let's compare it with the first one. But to be honest, it's not so bad. There is actually an aftermarket community who would consider such two pictures usable. Maybe for our taste, this central Blackburn spot gets this device replaced from our armory, but there are actually guys who would run it no questions asked. Last but not least, as a bonus that there's this one spot in addition here. All tests you saw in this video were taken in chronological order. As a final quick standoff, we did a quick bonus test with red dots. For this test, we used our Holosun red dot. So, yes, what if your PVS-14 is mounted on a rifle and somehow a red dot happens to go on high visible just in front of your device? After four minutes, it has done its job, unfortunately, a bad job. And that's obviously the reason to use red dots infrared mode. Ten minutes after infrared mode, the tube is fine, so again a factor to take into account.
red dot would be so close to your tube could actually make a burn mark to your device, and to the center of the tube, which could be most annoying. This is it. Thank you very much for making it this far. It's been a long video, and as stated at the start of the video, take some of these tests with a pinch of salt. Your modern tube would not be so stubborn against these light sources. It could be affected much more and way quicker. As stated, if we get 5,000 likes on this video, we are gonna do part two, and with one modern tube. Don't know if we would really go with Guckiest tube, but maybe with something from Photonies or Harder, let us know in the comments what tube it should be. Again, much appreciate for your time to watch this video. Take care. We see your guys in the next one.